gender ideology has no place in our K through 12 school system. And we've made that very, very clear. It is wrong for a teacher to tell a student that they may have been born in the wrong body or that their gender is a choice. And so we don't let that happen in Florida. And if Disney objects to that, well, so be it. We're going to do what's right. That was Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in South Carolina today celebrating his Don't Say Gay law. Now, that law banned teachers from talking about sexual orientation or gender identity in the classroom. It was widely opposed by educators and parents and businesses in the state, including Florida's largest single-site employer, Disney. But despite the backlash, DeSantis not only continues to tout the law, he is actually expanding the law. The current law prohibits any discussion of sexual orientation or gender identity in classrooms from kindergarten to third grade. But today, at the behest of Governor DeSantis, Florida's Education Board extended that rule, prohibiting LGBTQ discussions all the way through a Florida student's senior year of high school. Now, all of this is supposed to be a part of DeSantis's master plan to out-conservative Donald Trump in the Republican presidential primary. But polls show that Donald Trump continues to widen his early lead over Ron DeSantis. And then there is this little data point. This week, Governor DeSantis traveled to Washington to make a big show of trying to get endorsements from Republican members of Congress. But by the time that meeting arrived on Tuesday, several members of Congress from the state of Florida had already announced their support for Donald Trump. As of this afternoon, Trump has racked up endorsements from more than half of the Florida Republican congressional delegation. Joining us now is former Missouri senator and current MSNBC political analyst, the great Claire McCaskill. Claire, what what do these endorsements tell you about the DeSantis campaign? Well, if you look at what DeSantis is trying to do, DeSantis is trying to be a more a less chaotic Donald Trump. He has taken up the culture wars with a lot of gusto and gone after this. And by the way, we should point out. Alex, that the law that was passed was a typical culture war trying to address a problem that didn't exist. There were not teachers in K through three talking to their students about sexual orientation. That wasn't occurring. It was just one of those false flags that Republicans put up around culture wars to try to get the base all revved up. So. The thing that has happened to, to DeSantis is he was going to be the less chaotic, Harvard-educated Donald Trump, turns out, and supposedly smarter than Trump, turns out not so much. He has made so many blunders in the last three months, and we can go through them. There's a number of them. But I think at the top of the list is the fight with Disney. I mean, here's a beloved entity in the United States of America, uniquely American, um, Mickey Mouse and, and Star Wars and Toy Story and all the things that my grandchildren love. He goes after them. And what is his goal here? What is he trying to do? What is victory for him? Driving them out of the state? Drying up the most important source of jobs in Florida? And not to say anything about the economic activity that is generated at the properties in Disney, uh, there is no victory here for him against Disney. And what's happening is a lot of the big donors that DeSantis needs are going, wait a minute, we didn't sign up for a guy who is going to decide to use the heavy hand of government to try to control business in his state. It really is backfiring on it. Yeah, it's totally antithetical to what most Republican donors want to see from their governor. I think Rolling Stone has some texts from donors who are big Republican donors saying on a group chat of wealthy DeSantis donors, participants exploded with alarm over the Florida governor's presidential prospects. What the F is wrong with R.D.? We're using some abbreviations there, but I think you guys can fill in the blanks. I mean, this is someone who um, Trump is now—I mean, look, Trump is in on, on the—he's piling on as well. Trump on Truth Social. DeSanctus is being absolutely destroyed by Disney. Disney's next move will be the announcement that no more money will be invested in Florida because of the governor. This is also unnecessary, a political stunt. I mean, I guess, Claire, I mean, I, I would say there's a real-world effect to some of the don't-say-gay stuff beyond the culture war that he's obviously stoked 
provoked to not have seniors in high school be, uh, you know, able to learn about gender identity, sexual education more broadly. All of this legislation has, has had a profoundly chilling effect on teachers and students. People are unsure of what they can actually talk about. And it's not good for K through three, and it's very problematic for K through 12. This stuff, none of it's good for the state of Florida, and it increasingly looks like it's bad for the campaign of Ron DeSantis. Do you think he is just surrounded by bad advisors? I mean, as someone who's run campaigns yourself, do you think this is coming from DeSantis, or do you think that this is just terrible political strategy? I think it's a little bit of both. I think he got really full of himself when he had such a big victory last fall in Florida. And, you know, I'm not really sure exactly why his victory was so big. But after that, he began behaving like he was bulletproof. I mean, talk about political malpractice. He goes to Washington to supposedly arrive to the throngs of elected members of Congress saying, you're our Republican candidate. We want you. As it turns out, he had no endorsements lined up whatsoever in Washington. And Trump did. Yeah. So he goes to Washington and just looks dumb as Republicans leave meeting with him. Republicans from his own state leave the meeting with him and immediately endorse Trump. Yes. Uh, it couldn't it couldn't have gone worse for him. You you know how endorsements work, right? Like the idea that a candidate would go to the hill, you know, trumpeting his prospects and then be like, literally, it's like a face palm. The idea that these guys come out of the meeting and go with go for Trump. I mean, that doesn't happen in American politics, right? These things are pretty orchestrated. They're very orchestrated. And the fact that it wasn't shows that these guys aren't ready for prime time. DeSantis isn't, and neither is his team. The other thing you've got to realize is he made a huge blunder on Ukraine. That we have to figure into the equation. A lot of foreign policy people around the country that are very, very loyal Republican donors are going, wait a minute, what is he doing? Then on top of that, he signs a six week ban on abortion and tries to do it quietly. So that doesn't really help him with the really crazy right-wingers on these issues. And it certainly hurts him with a whole lot of independent voters in his state. And in the middle of all the gun violence, he's, he's passing more legislation and signing more legislation to make it even easier to carry a gun, no matter who you are, no matter what your qualifications or background. Yeah, I mean, it's the list is long because we didn't even get to the other topic, which is the social safety net that Trump is just evis eviscerating DeSantis on. And this is Donald Trump eviscerating um, Ron DeSantis with what I think is one of the most cutting political ads of the decade. Control Room, do we have time to play the putting fingers ad? Let's play it for our audience. Who have, for those who have not seen this, this is a new ad. Ron DeSantis loves sticking his fingers where they don't belong. And we're not just talking about pudding. DeSantis has his dirty fingers all over senior entitlements. Like cutting Medicare, slashing Social Security, even raising our retirement age. Tell Ron DeSantis to keep his pudding fingers off our money. Oh, and somebody get this man a spoon. For those who do not know, that, ari that arises from a uh, Daily Beast reporting that Ron DeSantis, once in a meeting, was um, unable to procure a spoon and ate pudding with his fingers. I cannot attest. We cannot attest to the veracity of that. <laughs> it is a disgusting ad. But, Claire, setting aside the, the grossness of it, it's something you could see um, Joe Biden running against, uh, against Ron DeSantis. And it's coming from one of the Republican Party's own. That's a Trump-endorsed ad or a Trump Super PAC ad that I think is rather effective in painting DeSantis as a greedy individual. This is a moment where I want to get popcorn and a Diet Coke and I want to watch Trump and DeSantis go after each other for the next year, because that's what's going to happen. Um, I will tell you this. Um, between Trump, DeSantis, and Mickey Mouse, my money, my money is on Mickey Mouse. You know it, Claire McCaskill. As a mom with a four- and five-year-old, Disney is escapable, I can, inescapable. I cannot underscore that enough. The great Claire McCaskill, thank you for your time tonight, Claire. It's great to see you. You bet. Thanks, Alex.